Most of us grow crops from seeds or plants that we start in spring or early on in the growing year. And then once we harvest them, we have to either re-sow them or in some cases we have to wait for the next year to get a crop. And that's because a lot of those veg, even if they survive the harvesting, they'll still die down when the first frosts arrive. But there is another way of growing edible crops that's more reliable, less effort, and they will survive from year to year. Plant them once and you'll get harvest for many years to come. I'm Tanya from Lovely Greens, and I'm gonna share with you the perennials that I have growing in my gardens, including the allotment back behind me, and give you some ideas for adding them to your own. Let's begin our tour of the perennial vegetables and edibles in the allotment with one that not very many people know is perennial and that is the Scarlet Emperor runner bean and it's really a bog standard variety. Some people grow it because it has really pretty red flowers and obviously it produces runner beans and I need to come and pick these. There's so many of them but if you allow it to, it will regrow from its roots if you live in a mild climate. So I would say zones eight and above. There are two things that can make a crop perennial. First of all, the ability to survive winter. And winters are different based on where you are. Here on the Isle of Man, we have very, very mild winters. And so a lot of perennial crops can do just fine here and they can regrow the next year. If you live someplace with deep, cold, frigid winters, a lot of the plants that are in my allotment probably won't survive. So making it through the winter makes a crop perennial in your garden. The other thing that makes a crop perennial is that you harvest in a way that doesn't kill the plant. So if you pull up the entire plant and eat the roots and the leaves, it's obviously not going to regrow. And if you take too much of certain plants that are perennial, they won't regrow either. So you need to make sure that it can survive your climate and that you're harvesting in a way that sustains the plant and allows it to live. Any guesses as to what this is? Get a little bit closer, maybe you can guess. No? These are asparagus and they look like ferns, but I don't actually think that they're in the fern family. And what you eat is the shoot that comes up in spring. And before it has a chance to turn into this beautiful foliage, it is that edible part. It's really tender, but it does take a while to get it situated. But once you have a patch on the go, you have that asparagus indefinitely. In my mind, there are four different types of perennial crops. So first of all, you have your perennial fruit and berries. You've got your perennial vegetables. You have your perennial herbs, so the woody herbs like rosemary and thyme. And then you also have tubers like oca and potatoes and sunchokes, also called Jerusalem artichokes. So those four different types of crops will be able to fill out every year, come back and give you a harvest. And I would say about half of the crops that I have growing in the allotment are perennials. It's just easy and I can rely on them to give me harvest every single year. Next to my bean trellis, I have an unusual South American tuber growing here. And these are oka. They're also called the New Zealand yam. The leaves look a bit like sorrel and they taste pretty much the same as sorrel, but it's the tubers that we eat mainly and they are delicious. I have information over on my website on how to grow these, but basically they put on a lot of leaves in the summer and then as soon as it starts getting cold, that's when they start forming their tubers under the ground. I'm trying a couple of new perennials this year and this is one of them. It's called the nine star broccoli or nine star cauliflower. And I ordered them as plants and I've put them in. And next year, 
they'll form little florets that are like little spears of cauliflower and as long as you keep those cut they will continue to grow and live and there is a lady in the UK who supplies these as plants and seeds I believe and she has one of these that's five years old so they can live quite a long time I used to grow globe artichokes when I had my other plot and I haven't gotten them started again but I really do need to get on the ball globe artichokes you eat the flower bud and these gorgeous things are delicious and I even eat a little bit of the stem as well underneath if you leave them though they'll turn into beautiful purple flowers that bumblebees absolutely adore there's another type of perennial that's related to globe artichokes that we also have growing here at the site and I'll take you over there just now this plot that we're coming up to right now has changed hands many times over the years but one thing that has remained the same is the cardoon that grows at the bottom it looks a lot like globe artichoke and they are related and although you can eat the flower buds these smaller and spikier buds people tend to actually eat the blanched stems of the leaves instead such a beautiful day today it's about 10 30 in the morning on a saturday and i am surprised that no one else is up here now in my last video we picked black currants and red currants and they grow on these bushes and the birds have stripped all of the berries that I've left but that's all right we've got plenty in the freezer now with a lot of berry bushes they will lose their leaves in the winter and then regrow the next year yeah, seriously there's not a single red currant left on here but surprisingly I spot some black currants on this one I'll have to come back and pick them before the birds spot them let's just go have a look at the blackberries down here this is a trellis, a blackberry trellis I built a few years ago and it is covered in thornless blackberries and oh my goodness I need to get up here and start picking the onion family has quite a few different perennials and at home I have perennial onions which is a new type I'm not sure exactly the cultivar because I picked it up at a seed swap I also have chives growing at home and I've started doing some of the Welsh onions and also the Egyptian walking onions they're still very young at home but here at the allotment they are much more matured and although you can eat the bulbs if you do it'll kill the plant so you leave those in and you can harvest these little bulbs or you can harvest the young greens and they get their name because these bulbs are quite heavy and over time the stalk will wither and then it will fall down to the ground and then these little bulbs will start growing into little plants so each one of those little mini onions will grow into a brand new plant my favorite perennial onion is the Welsh onion and I've grown all of mine from seed originally years ago and then have given people plants so you can start your own clump with just one of these and it will eventually clump out or you can also gather the seeds in like this and start them that way and I've given away many seeds at our annual seed swap and they grow really really easily they do suffer a little bit of rust but you just take those leaves out and they'll regrow and they'll be perfectly fine now the way that you eat these is like giant chives so you, you have the greens there are many different types of perennial herbs a lot of them are woody like lavender and I started these guys from plants that I propagated off of another plant and they are massive now I think that they're five years old now these ones might be a little bit younger wow there's bees everywhere Let's see if we can get close enough to listen I count lavender as a perennial edible because you can eat lavender flowers and they are delicious in cookies in drinks lavender syrup so yummy I remember one time on a trip to the south of France we had lavender ice cream which was really interesting I'm really fortunate in that I have two gardens 
to plant all of my crops and herbs and perennials in. But if you are restricted by space and you have a balcony or a patio or a small garden, don't worry because a lot of perennials can grow in containers as well. And some of them, you really wanna keep them in containers. So things like horseradish and sunchokes, because once they're in the garden, they'll just take over and be impossible to get out. It took me years to get Drew some artichokes out of my plot when I first started it. The previous tenant had planted them there. And although I love Jerusalem artichokes, they don't agree with my stomach. It's about 50-50 with people and I just didn't have any space for them. So if you are restrained by space, or even if you're not, grow some of your perennials in containers. If you plant horseradish out in the garden, it will take over completely. It will become a thug. It's a nightmare. And so when I was given a couple of horseradish roots, I kept them in small containers. This is one of them. The other is still in the greenhouse. And I'm going to upgrade them into slightly larger containers. And when you're planting any kind of edible into pots and containers, you do have to keep an eye on the sun, the water, and the nutrients in the soil, especially if the plant is going to be living in the pot for a long time. And so this is 100% organic compost. It's peat free, it's from a, a local farmer. And I'm gonna use that in the container, but I will also make sure that it's topped up with feeds if it needs to. And actually, this will probably be fine without a feed, but it will need a larger pot in the end. And I know of people who grow horseradish in rubbish bins, so garbage cans. There are a lot of benefits to growing perennial vegetables and fruits and herbs and it's because they're so long-lived and because the plants are long-lived that means low effort so you're not going to have to re-sow every year. They're also reliable, they'll come back every single year and if you're interested in no-dig gardening they're fantastic because you don't have to dig the soil each year for a lot of them. So if you are interested in adding perennials go for it. My allotment is filled with them. The home garden is also filled with them. And it is just such a relief, especially at busy times of the year, to know that they'll continue cropping even when I don't have time to sow seeds. If you want more information on perennial vegetables, I have a lot more listed over on my website along with growing tips. So check out that link that should pop up on the screen and head over to lovelygreens.com for a little bit more information. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any unusual perennial crops growing in your garden, leave a comment below and tell us a little bit more about what you have in your garden. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now. One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to Lovely Greens and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications for when new videos are out.